Okay, we've got to talk about uh, quarter one uh, real estate market report for 2021. Uh, there are some trends occurring that I think are important to highlight and discuss, uh, whether you're looking to purchase a home, uh, sell a home, or uh, possibly you're looking at it from an investing investing standpoint, or maybe perhaps um, you know looking to tap into some of the equity of your home, or you're just uh, continuing to be a renter. I think there's a lot of important things uh, that are occurring. So uh, my name is Alex Craig. Uh, I am an agent and founder of the Delinsky Group over at Century 21 Looking Glass. Um, hey, if you like these videos, I just want to take a moment and say, please, please hit the subscribe button as we send out uh, different informational videos about real estate uh, when we get the opportunity. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So here's some of the uh, market statistics that we're going to go over for the month of uh, March of 2021. Uh, we're basically looking at how everything ended in the last quarter to give us an idea of, you know, obviously how the quarter performed uh, for the start of 2021. So uh, on the left here, in the far, far, far most left column, we have a median sale price of 172, so 172,000. We sold 519 units and the inventory homes in days was 20 21.9 uh, for the month of March. And then when we look at comparison, we're going to look at March 2020. Um, obviously, we can see we had 162,600 uh, median sale price. We had 400, or excuse me, 539 units were sold, and our inventory of homes in days was 57 days. Um, so we can look at that year and change. Um, so we have about a 6%, specifically a 5.78% growth in the median sale price, and we're down uh, about 3.71% in the total units sold, and we're down, and this is critical, this is really, really critical to understand. We are down uh, negative 61.6%. In terms of the inventory of homes in days and so this is essentially saying how many days would it take us to sell all of the current homes on the market right now at the end of march we're at 21.9 that is less than a single month uh, i believe accurately it comes out to about 0 0.73 um, of a month and we would have all of the homes sold on the market and to give some perspective, a balanced market is about six months, uh, which would translate into about 180. Uh, so the inventory of homes would be close to 180. We're all the way down at 21.9. I have never in my career uh, seen something so low. And even looking back at historical data, uh, it appears that it's never even been that low. Uh, so this is, it's just, it is absolutely mind boggling. Um, and so I want to dive into that a little bit deeper because I think it's important to understand sort of what's going on here in this real estate market to give us a better idea because we have a decrease of uh, inventory, you know, which is telling us that, you know, the, the market is, is doing well, it's on fire, but yet at the same time we have units sold that is kind of actually decreasing um, over 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 time. And so you might think, hey, the market's softening. The market is um, heading for a downturn, perhaps. Uh, but we have, you know, but still on a positive indicator, we obviously have median sale price. So what I want to do is I want to dive into a little bit um, into real estate market supply and demand economics without getting into too much detail, because I think that's going to give us really a lot of the context to understand this kind of data. So this blue curve that we have here that basically has a negative slope sloping down there is the market demand curve. The green, yellowish, tinted kind of kind of curve there that we have um, with positive slope is our market supply curve. So you can think of our market supply curve as the sellers, the people who are listing their home, and the market demand curve as the buyers, the people that are uh, looking to purchase a home. And so essentially what's happening, uh, why you're seeing this fluctuation in price, uh, this, this little red dot is essentially what we would call the equilibrium price or what we might call the market price. So in other words, we could call it, you know, uh, the fair market value uh, for a property or the average or median perhaps uh, price for a property. And so what we have occurring is this this green uh, yellow looking curve the supply curve is actually shifting to the left uh, because the, our supply is decreasing uh, there aren't as many listings uh, on the market and less people are listing their homes 
on the market than have in you know the past and in previously. Uh, I was looking at the data and currently we have less than 500 uh, homes on active listings. And in the past, we were at uh, close to a thousand just a couple of years ago, or a little over a thousand, um, about you know two years ago. So we've seen a half, you know, half the number of homes uh, are even available for sale that were available, uh, you know, just two years ago. And so what we have is this sh this curve is shifting, you know, to the left. And the equilibrium price is achieved when the supply curve and the demand curve intersect. So when we have this curve shifting to the left, we have a new curve that's drawn a little bit over here. And what we end up having, having is we have an equilibrium price that is significantly higher uh, than where we were, uh, you know, in the previous in the previous market. And so it's really important to understand, you know, that's how we could essentially be achieving, you know, a, a uh, you know, a shifting curve to the left with the demand curve, uh, which is going to increase our price. Uh, and so, in other words, we don't have to sell as many units uh, at that price anymore. And we're going to see some interesting things in the market. And that's essentially what we're seeing occur is that the su supply is really, really low. Even if the demand has shifted because of COVID or economic impact, the supply curve has shifted far more than the demand curve. And I think part of that is because nobody's really selling. Um, the only people that are selling from, and this is more anecdotal evidence um, than, than evidence I've actually been able to collect, which is that most homes on the market are people who are selling because maybe maybe they're in probate or they inherited a house you know or uh, mom and dad need to move to a retirement community or uh, you know there's some significant factor that is causing them uh, to, to move you know like a health illness or things like that uh, and so but the people that are buying there's still a lot of people out there in the market that are looking for a home uh, you know, first time home buyers and those sorts of things. And uh, there's a lot of those people still out there. Um, and that's being driven a lot by low interest rates and various other things uh, that people are still looking to get in and to uh, purchase a home. And so we definitely have, uh, even if we have, you know, somewhat of a decrease in demand, you know, because I would say that there probably has been uh, due to the COVID, the, the, the supply, um, you know, is decreasing just much further. And so when we're looking at all of these trends over a year, uh, and we, we compare it over a year over year basis, uh, we're looking at in March 2021, uh, the average median sale price was 174,800. Again, uh, we're seeing a 9.4% increase in that average sale price. Again, thinking about the unit and market economics there that we looked at in supply and demand, it makes sense that we're pushing the, the, the sale price of a home is continuing to be driven up. Just, you know, uh, despite the fact that we're selling less units, it's simply driven by the fact that there is also less supply. Uh, so again, we can see that we saw we sold less units. Um, you know, not not by much, which is pretty much a flat flat line growth. There, we're actually at negative zero point seven percent. Not very significant uh, in terms of an increase or decrease. Uh, and then in the inventory of home days, again. We were at twenty one. We were at twenty nine point nine two in March of twenty twenty, and we're down to eighteen point five two in in March twenty twenty one. Super critical to understand that just the inventory is is low and everything is selling fast. Uh, so it's just it's just crazy here. And so if you look at the chart, um, you know, if we look at the chart and sort of what's this what this talent is telling us, we can see the trend line uh, here which is again basically indicating our flat growth in the sold in the sold number of units uh, but when we look at this we're actually seeing a decrease over time in the number of sold units just in general and overall i mean you know of course when we're comparing into march you know of uh, 2020 it, it seems that hey we're we're it's 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 level but it's important to keep in mind that in march 2020 uh there was covid uh, and midway through March, the entire real estate market shut down. Uh, homes weren't able to be shown, and uh, nobody was essentially writing offers and closing offers. And so, you know, we we see those kinds of things, and it's it's kind of important to note uh, that that aspect that um, that 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 we're really only at the level 
of uh, where we were at COVID. Um, so you can see that, you know, we saw that, you know, coming out of COVID, we saw a spike, you know, it remained kind of kind of level at that high level there, you know, around 750. And then since then, we've been on a decline for the winter. So it'll be interesting to see what quarter two uh, actually holds if we if we go back up, um, you know, with with a typical trend, uh, you know, when we come into the spring market, we usually see an increase or if we're going to continue to see sort of a, a flat, um, you know, curve here that's not really going to grow our number of units sold. And it'll be interesting to see what that does uh, on the market economics of, of everything else. But, you know, as you can see, we have, you know, just a trend over time, though, here from, you know, August 19, um, you know, in September, you know, to where we were, uh, you know, it's a it's a, it's a decrease. So uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, where we are and where we're pulling. And then in terms of the overall real estate market uh, over the last 12 months, again, we, we are seeing growth. Um, so even though our units sold is relatively flat, relatively stable, uh, there isn't much change. We are seeing um, growth in the overall market, which is mostly driven by the increase in pricing. So our total uh, you know, market, you could say, is represented by $1.27 billion dollars. Uh, in March of 2020 for the for the year and then uh, our rolling 12 there in March of 2021 this year at the end of quarter one was 1.38 you know billion or you could round it up to 1.39 billion dollars uh, so you know that's a significant growth of you know a hundred plus million 110 million dollars or so 120 million dollars in growth and I think a lot of the you know since it's not driven by units it has to be driven by um, price increases and that's essentially what we're seeing um, and that's that's what's causing this this growth and this real estate market growth so there you have it that's how the real estate market is doing um, if you're looking to you know sell or you're looking to buy a home um, definitely get in touch with us um, you can do so by giving us a call at 517-244-6044 or uh, visit our website and send us an email um, uh, we'd be happy to help you uh, see if we might be able to help you provide a consult uh, to see what might make sense um, in terms of getting your house on the market and uh, um, yeah so get in touch with us um, again be sure to subscribe for more videos like this